Hi, I'm Sebastian Sukram, and in this video we will be discussing micromanipulation. Uh, make sure before we start any further in the video that you complete the pre-survey linked in the description. So, what is micromanipulation? Micromanipulation is used to interact with objects that require high levels of precision that can't be achieved by the human hand. Micromanipulators can have movement in up to four directions where either a large dial to turn by hand, a joystick, or a remote control is used. There are three main types of drives that a micromanipulator can have. A direct drive, a motor slash electronic drive, or a hydraulic drive. A direct drive uses mechanical gears, also known as cantilevers, to reduce the microscopic movements. Motor also known as electronic drives, use a similar gear system as a mechanical drive, but the gears are driven by electrical motors controlled by the input device, which would either be buttons or a joystick. Hydraulic drives rely on movement of hydraulic fluid. It is the most smooth, but requires maintenance of the liquid over time. Some hydraulic drives use water, but specific oils can provide better results. Micromanipulation is used during the intracytoplasmic sperm injection step of an IVF, also known as in vitro fertilization. During this step, unfertilized eggs are held against the holding pipette, where a sperm cell is then injected into the egg, fertilizing it. The micromanipulator used during my shadowing experience was an Olympus, with a three-axis motorized coarse manipulator combined with a three-axis final hydraulic micromanipulator, each with a joystick control. It has two micromanipulators for both the holding side and the injecting side. With how great micromanipulators are, there are still some issues that need improving. This part of the video is all about improvements. A big improvement to be made in micromanipulators is the auto detection of end effectors. During sperm injection, the tips of the micromanipulator must be manually aligned before fertilizing the eggs. If this process becomes automated, it can save embryologists time. A solution for this is automatically locating the end effectors that will align them accordingly. The big challenge of doing this is that the tips of a micromanipulator are micrometers in size, and it can be easily damaged if they are collided into. Auto-adjusting of end effectors helps us save time for professionals using the tool. Something that micromanipulators work to prevent is unwanted movements caused by either drift, not that kind of drift, and backlash control. Let's start by talking about drift. So drift is the unwanted movement of the instrument held by a micromanipulator when the operator is trying to not cause movement. It's the same thing as controller drift in video games, where after using a joystick every so often wearing it down, eventually it starts to move slightly on its own in whatever direction you use mostly. Drift is re can be reduced with stop locks and springs. Now backlash is the unwanted movement of the instrument at the end of intended movement. Think of it as a red light green light game. When you're running around on the green light and then suddenly someone says red light you s you want to stop but if you're going too fast you keep moving that that thing where when you stop and you want to keep moving that's backlash backlash is prevented by limiting the degrees of freedom in each dimension and isolating a micromanipulator from the microscope stage so that was a brief overview of micromanipulation this video covered micromanipulation with key parts including the drives and con the controls, micromanipulation and embryology, and some improvements that are being looked at for micromanipulators. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and please complete the end survey linked in the description.